Greetings and salutations, this is Rick Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado with another episode of Knowledge Guru Guy. Today we're going to look at Rhino Linux. Have a look at that, a quick look. See some major differences from other distros on it. And check it out. Let's go check it out, alright? Now you should see the uh, website for... For Rhino Linux, simply rhinolinux.org. Rhino Linux is a rolling release Ubuntu based distribution with Paxstall SFC with at its core. We're we'll getting into more of that later on. Anyway, there's a download link for it. You can read all this other stuff if you want to on here. And you download it here or here, one of the two places. So you go click on download. You select your edition. Click on this. You select generic ISO, which most people will use. For either 846, 8664, or ARM64. We also have options for Pine64, Raspberry Pi, ARMs. Generic ISO is what I downloaded. We're going to take a look at today. So that's what we're going to do. So, and put on my Ventoy stick and up and load it on this computer over here. Now the install process was pretty, pretty decent, pretty Calamars installer uses. So it's pretty simple. Most people know how to use Calamars. You know, you can find plenty of examples on previous videos of them where I don't even use a Calamars installer. So, but it's all pretty much next, next, next type stuff for me. And uh, so, yeah, you can do that and look at that. And we'll take a peek at Rhino Linux. Now, you should see a Rhino Linux desktop over here. Now, major differences between it and, uh, other Ubuntu based distros. This is unique. Like I said, you might have been confused when I read the description. It said rolling release. It's a rolling release Ubuntu based distribution. And it's not just semi rolling like a lot of people use testing to talk about semi rolling, semi -rolling release. It is, they actually take packages as they come out from there and they create their own rolling release the repository and yeah, so we need to go to terminal I think on here for a minute and just take that out let's see where is that can I find it a little bit more no so we got that and you have dope good job check it out of memory and see what it's using on memory 529 megabytes out of Eight gigs of memory. Not too shabby, is it? Nope. It's about standard XFC. The low end of it, I guess, or lower end of XFC megabytes. So yeah. Now you got that. Now I wanted to look at the uh, Rhino Package Manager. Now Rhino Package Manager. Yeah, they use its wrapper for apt and basically several other package managers. They use Packstall. Packstall is like the similar to the AUR in the uh, NARCH. So yeah, and more takes source codes and creates it for you out of pre-built package deals. So yeah, so it's got a little bit of AUR in it. It's got some rolling release is more like Arch in that regard. I think they do a little bit more testing than Arch does on their rolling release packages. If I'm not mistaken. Now we're going to check out the Rhino Package Manager. Rhino dash package install. Install kitty on here. Okay, so it goes out and searches all the various. Flat packs, you name a flat packs on here, that kind of thing. Yeah, so 
You have all these options you can check. Now it tells you where it's going to get it from. Apt is a repository. It pretty much is a repository altogether. And I looked up and found Cloud Kitty. Kitty's one we want. This one right there. Yeah, it's one we want in number five. But you also have options Cloud Kitty. So let's say we want to eat Kitty five. We're going to install five. And say yes. Uh, unlike most apps, app things, he wants to know here and say yes. And ask you, are you sure you want to install this? Let's type in yes. You can send it or otherwise it'll just kick out of it. And you want your password, of course. And it installs Kitty on there. You can okay. That's package manager now it updates pretty much sort of like the update thing process. So like rental right package. Now I also say when you first uh, log in to the first instance of the right rental it goes to this little uh, welcome screen thing. Okay, you have the opportunity to enable flat packs, snaps, or app images on your to work on your thing. Uh, I don't remember if I had to. I think I recall I had to still go in and manually tell it to. I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember where that is. With that. So, create that. But anyway, you have flat pack, you enable flat pack and snaps out of this. Pack stall. In other words, you could just use pack stall. Oh, yes, yeah, it's wrapper for pack stall, app, flat pack, and snaps. If you enable snaps, it'll show up in there. If you haven't, you won't show up. And it enables, you get a chance to enable snaps, app images, or flat packs out of out of the box whenever you get the welcome screen so you enable what you want to use and it'll use that and update them too i remember how to be able to see it uh, probably is rhino rhino package whoops Remember in all packages. Again, it's default to no. Yes, you want to update all packages. And it does update and it also does that. When install one package, upgrade some five packages. When I continue. Now this is the default to See what it does is if you you can also install Nala on here if you like to, if you want to, you can install Nala. And then we'll use Nala. Otherwise then use apt. And this. And in case you didn't know the way you tell what's default is the one that's capitalized. So capital Y and, and lowercase no means Y is the default, you just press enter. And you get your Y default. The no's capitalized, N's capitalized. You just get uh, no's default instead of yes. How that works. Uh, it doesn't really seem to have any kind of a software center that I can find on here. Nor does it have a. Probably too hard to, to figure out how to figure all this out. So, pretty much have to update it and run updates from the terminal command. And there goes pack stall. Okay, so there it is, pack stall. So I did a pack stall, which is a kernel stable. Upgraded my Linux kernel.
Yeah, it boots up rather fast. And still the same same crown, doesn't it? Well, yeah, so you have some more, it's more manual update process on the, on the terminal if you have, if you have to update, you want to keep track of it, doesn't have anything that warns you when there's updates waiting or anything like that, that I can tell, so, yeah, so some improvements they may make for future versions of this program, right now that's the package manager, pack stall, and stuff like that. So if you do a search on Rhino Linux, that's what the Rhino package search. Let's see, let's search for, I don't know, we'll search for it. All right, text type, text paint, text on ice, text math, text guitar, and Tux Football Supercard. All these apps there. There's flat packs. Tux Guitar. Tux Family. Stunt Rally. Flat pack. X Moto. Atari. Super Tux. Super Tux Project. They have all those things, so yeah, all this tech stuff in there that you use for flat packs. You can pull from flat packs or you can pull from app. From those, just use what you want. Search function for you. So, the search function shows you the different flat pack versions that you uh, can use. Like, let's see, let's, let's do the OBS, even though I have OBS in here, it's installed right now. Right on. Package search OBS. Okay, so you got pack stalls. If you want the latest and greatest, you can get that. Or you can get it from the app version of it. That's sufficient for you. Or you can get out of flat packs. Um, OBS project dash stu dot studio is one you want there. So, yeah, you got all sorts of plugins you can get there. You switch your scale to sound. Yes, capture. Yeah, so it's all those. That shows you all of the vast all stuff you get. Now, open the pack saw is going to be more up to date stuff. So, it's more of the rolling release part of the deal, I think, for the most part. So, there you go. That's the that's part. It's the rolling release part, and it's pretty interesting. So, now, pack saw, if you just want to use pack saw by yourself, you can use that. And this tells you some of the things. Yeah, you use install, dash dash install, or you use dash i. That's what I say, it's more like pac man than anything. And you use different letters, so like s doesn't install a package, it searches your package. And r removes, d downloads, a adds repo, u update. Now that's like you want to update a user branch. Update pack stall. If you want to do a regular upgrade of all install packages, you do up. Yes, yeah, so we want to do that. You pack stall. Up. It's taking for updates. Nothing to do since we just upgraded a while ago. Nothing to upgrade. So that's. What to do on that if you want to just go pack stall and no upgrades before you do do an upgrade on another one in case I pack stall one time because I used sudo it didn't 
It did say you can't use pseudo with Packstall. You do have to insert some point in Packstall if you're installing some, but but to upgrade and stuff like that. Yeah, I didn't want to use the sudo command. Now the other part of this is the gnome light features and they basically change this over to the gnome version of XFCE. And if you like gnome you like that pretty much I guess. Like you have your application grid look very gnomish like right there. Okay, so it pops out and it'll show you all these applications. Blank, Power Manager, Postdoc Show, Moodle, Drive Media, Restore, all those things. Now, I think I've installed a few things. There's a kitty which I just installed. Most of these, I think, were, were default in there. Now, U-Launcher is a unique, uh, uh, kind of like cosmic function like pop os is cosmic so like if you hit that you get search bar basically up there and you can type two plus four and it'll do the whole six thing it also gives you the alt commands you can use to to select one so say you enter something like uh Fire, say okay, want Firefox, and you hit Alt 2, and we kick in Firefox instead of File Manager. Or you can just hit, if you want to File Manager, you just hit hit your your uh, key binding, I mean, just hit your enter there, and it'll pop in File Manager, which whoever runs on top is one of the I hit. But if you want Application Binder, it does have that, and that's different than. This, this is their own special launcher program they built for this function. Now, I'll have to show you a few things about that if you want to do it. Now, you can use shortcut keys to access that as well. Just hit Super S. And it's Super S for obviously for search. And. Yeah. And also, if you want to access the application menu, you use the key shortcut key bindings like a gnome, you just hit super A and it'll pop up like that. So, you get all these interesting things, you got your appearances, you can change it maybe if you wanted to. I've never found much reason to change it in XFC or appearance. The only thing after you really change is the backgrounds. It's, uh, it's defaults to intelligent high, which means if it if it'll block some, it'll just move out of the way and hide this whole panel. Plank is what they use there, as you can tell by looking in the thing there. When I configure you up here in the beginning, the end, those things, and you go preferences. You can figure like say you wanted this on the bottom. Position and left, you don't like my left, you can move to the bottom. Wait, there it is. Also, say you run center alignment, you fill it all the way, I guess, or you can start or end. Then on center, back alignment, you can change the size of your back alignment down. There, I guess, for now. And you also do icon zoom if you want to do that. So, anyway, you do your behavior, to change your behavior, turn to go from telehide. Your options are auto hide, dodge, maximize window, dot window dodge, and dodge active windows. And I guess Intel had probably the best one for that. And you show them pinned. Item management, straight workspace. Means I guess if you go to a different workspace on your computer, that you would have the 
Yeah, the docklets up here. And then the thing like up here in the panel. Docklets. And the options. So yeah, you had all those options. You can play around with that if you wanted to. Another shortcut in case you didn't know it, if you wanted to log out of this thing. There's, there's a lot of things, several ways to do it. When you go up here, and you can log out by clicking that. Like that'll bring this this menu up. If you want to do that? You just want to do it. if you use quit, you give it Alt F F four, or if you set your quit button to to super Q like I do, hit that, and it brings it up right away on a blank desktop so yeah you got that option or you can go to this i'm sure to log out somewhere in here somewhere Hello. right there you also you search for it up here but it's just go log out so you can use that if you wanted to but Obviously faster just to keep your mouse or keyboard person just to hit one of those things. Away you go. That is the differences, the main differences you can find between this and the Mutu. There are other distros that are based on Mutu. This one, it's a rolling release. Two, it, it uses Axstall, which is more like the AUR. And it also has cosmic style bar on it. And it has a gnome like application menu. Obviously not that not a dynamic workspace switcher, but just oh I see. We have one, two, three, four desktop. You switch to between them right there. Dynamic workspaces like GNOME does, but it does have workspaces. And a way to switch them from the plank, or you can say keybind because if they're not already set in there, I think had some set for most all of them, so I'm sure probably has some set for the window view. So, yeah, that's what you can do. So, we got that. That's mainly the main things that are different about this distro now. One little minor difference on it is that when you press on window key, nothing happens. So I'm gonna yell they know. There's no whisker menu in here currently. If you wanted to put it in, I'm sure you could add it if you wanted to. But I'm not sure why you'd want to. Because you already have the S menu. But if you don't like that, you can switch that, I suppose, for whisker menu. And uh Yeah, the U launcher, which some people like that, and Cosmic, some people don't like the Cosmic launcher. And their U launcher, which is similar to Cosmic's launcher. And uh, bada bing, bada boom, there you go. You like it, you like it, you don't like that, you won't like this probably. And, but the thing is, you can change it if you know how. So that, uh, Rhino Linux. I've had it on this machine for about a week or two. Just kind of seeing how it ran and stuff. I've go watch some videos, that kind of thing. Simple stuff, nothing real fancy on it. And it has worked solidly well with Firefox. And, and it's a good distro overall. And it's a rolling release, so you got that option for it. With Paxstall. Yeah, the update process is a little different, that kind of thing. But, yeah, you can figure it out, get used to it. And, uh, yeah, so if you want a Bluetooth based stability, but you want uh, rolling releases for most update kernels and packages and stuff, like a lot of distros, it's a good solid distro. 
But I think it will depend on how they do with the repository management and that kind of thing as to how good it will be on the upswing. It seems like they got a good solid distro. This is their first first version of it out, I think. The first version, second version, something like that. So, but it's pretty stable and it works well. The problem I found was when I installed it, I mean, it rebooted, but it then it just kind of went to a blank screen for a while. So I closed it out, I pushed the button to hold down the button for a long time. For a while, for till the computer shut down, started back up and then it popped back up and ran just fine after that. So if you have that problem, you can do that too. Or tell them what it was. It might have been something with my computer specific to my computer, and I had that problem. Yeah, there's things I do to adjust it myself to make it a little more usable for my my taste, but it's usable, pretty pretty decent. That's Rhino Linux. Now, if you have a mind to, you like this video, you want to subscribe, do subscribe. If you want to uh, click the bell so you know when I get emails, when I send out new videos and stuff, do that. I send out about one, I try to hit once a week, but my time has been really restricted of late. But I say I may may not be able to get out to uh, all the videos and stuff. So, but if you want to subscribe, do that. If you like the video, it helps engagement. So, like it, make comments about what you like about the video, what you didn't like about the video. Try to talk clearly. I have Parkinson's, so it's one of the reasons I'm quieter than most people. <laughs> but, and I can do about that, really. Other than just try to think, talk loud, talk loud, talk loud, talk loud, talk loud. Maybe have the gain on this microphone pulled up pretty high. So still sometimes I slur things and get things messed up. Apologize for that if I do. If I try to edit out all the ones that just totally don't make any sense. I can't even hear what I said. Try to edit those out. So yeah, so at any rate, subscribe. And see you in the next video. And remember, may the Linux Force be with you. Bye.